This is the solution to Integrity's June Exercise Challenge. So let's get into it. Every month, Integrity hosts an amazing challenge created by the community. This month, it was an XSS challenge where the goal is to find the XSS vulnerability. And this one has been created by Lawrence V. L. So a huge thanks to you for creating that. Now, these challenges are a competition. What does that mean? Well, we release them on Twitter and then we give people one week to solve it. If you solve it, you go on integrity.com and write a report and we will accept that if valid. And then at the end, we will pick out six winners winning in total 300 euros of swag. So if you want to win in the future, then be sure to follow us on Twitter so you never miss out of these challenges in the future. But for now, I'm Pink Draconian and I'm going to guide you through the solution of this month's XSS challenge. What do you like? That is the big question in this challenge. And well, we have some options. We can like milk, cookies or alert. Now, in the context of an XSS challenge, I think I like alert the most. So let's start with that one. And once we select that, we see a get parameter choice gets added, which is set to alert in this case. Now, if we uh, choose alert, then we get this field message. We can enter a message such as subscribe and submit that. And we see that we now get an alert with uppercase subscribe, whereas we enter lowercase um, and that is what this alert thing does. Now you may wonder what happens if I just do document.domain. Well, then we get document.domain alerted. So this is obviously not an XSS. We're, this is a functionality. We're allowed to alert things, but we cannot execute arbitrary JavaScript in this manner yet. So because let's take a look at what is going on on the back. So I'm gonna enter test here, and then I'm gonna go into the DOM and, and, and take a look at the, uh, the JavaScript that is generated here. So first of all, we obviously have our uh, select, uh, we have our form, which uh, is the alert form. And at the bottom here, we see there is a script tag in there that does an alert of the text test, but it uses um, some backticks there. And backticks in JavaScript are interesting. So, so let's give that a quick Google. So, um, JavaScript backtick. And we find this article on template literals. And template literals are quite interesting because they allow you to execute expressions as shown here. So through the use of a dollar sign and opening the curly quotes, we can execute JavaScript. So I'm going to start this string interpolation here. And I'm going to enter, for example, one plus one. And we should now see two. And that, ex that is exactly what we see. So this worked already. That is great. Uh, so we have uh, arbitrary code execution, right? We can just do, uh, well, uh, I want to just execute document.domain and submit that. But no alert pops up. And now this says uppercase document.domain. And if we go and look into the console, we will see that there has been an error an uncaught reference error document is not defined. And that is because in JavaScript, everything is case sensitive. So uppercase document is not the same as lowercase document, And that is a very big issue that is really hard to overcome. And I think it might even be impossible to overcome. But it's good to know that there is an option here. Uh, perhaps we could dig way deeper into this and try to find some crazy way to bypass all of this. But we shouldn't forget that we still have two different choices to check out. So let's just switch our choice for now and see what is happening over there. And right now I'm going to go for the milk option just because that's now first up on the list. And if we select this option, then we get asked how much milk we want. I, I want five cups and six buckets. And if I submit that, we see that we get 29 total cups of milk. Uh, so once again, let's take a look at the inspector here and see what is actually going on. We can see our form here and we see a script element here that is quite interesting because it's going to create a variable total, which is created by taking the eval of five plus six times four. Now notice that, that those are our inputs. And if I change this to a seven and submit it, 
then we see that this dynamically changes what is happening inside of this eval, which is obviously evaluating what we put there. So that's quite interesting. Uh, after that, it's just going to add the total value into this element here. But okay, we have something being put, some user input being put into an eval. So what if I uh, just put some text in here, uh, text in here, what will happen? Well, looking at our script deck, we see that we are now evaling zero plus six times four. So this text, well, they try to convert this text into a number and then put that into the eval. So our text is not just straight up being put into the eval. And we're only allowed to work with numbers. So this will be pretty difficult or even impossible to get an XSS out of. So we've also exhausted that option. But luckily there is a last option. It seems that we have to like cookies. So let's check that out. We would like some cookies. Well, that is the only option left. So let's click on cookies. And now we see some things appearing on the screen. We see the text cookie colon and then eggs, eggs, chocolate, chocolate, price 10. And then vendor and a URL. And this seems to be our URL that we can see up top here. This is something that we fully control that's being outputted on the screen. So let's see if they do some uh, filtering on what is being shown. So what if I just want to input an image tag here? That doesn't work because now we error out the choice. So let's just put an end here, run that again. And now we see that nothing is showing up. If we run it again, so we have to do this twice, then we see that uh, things are being encoded. So we see that our, um, our closing and opening braces have been HTML encoded, so there won't be any way here to get a new element going and get an XSS in that way. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but let's go into the inspector here to take a look at what is happening. So first of all, we see our select. We have this script that we haven't seen before, which does something interesting. So I'm going to take this into the console. And here we can take a look at it better uh, with, with some easier ways of seeing it. And we see that it's going to create a function cookie spawn, which is going to do some things. It's going to set a cookie, cookie shop. It's also going to create a function create, uh, which is going to call cookie spawn with X, chocolates, our full URL and part of our URL. Okay, so this is happening in a script in a script element. So this is very interesting. We don't need to create an image here. If we could just escape out of here, we could get an XSS. Uh, but after all of that, it's going to run that create function. So yeah, our user input is being used here in a script deck, in a function. This is incredibly dangerous. But as you can see, it also encodes some stuff here. So first of all, I think we should find out every character that is allowed to be used here. So, so I'm just going to do some keyboard mashing here and grab all of these special characters like so, this one, that one, that one. Uh, just get all of them so that we can see which ones are allowed and which ones aren't allowed. Uh, all right. I think that's all. Let's press enter and let's find out uh, by going back into the script deck and putting it in the console. Okay, we can see that something messes up here after the at, and that is because, well, we used a hashtag there, which is obviously uh, being parsed in the URL. So let's remove the hashtag and try that again. So without the hashtag, we can see that uh, a lot more characters are allowed, like a dollar sign, an at sign, a multiplication sign, all of these, a back, uh, a backslash and a forward slash are allowed. Uh, okay, but no quotes are allowed. They're being banned. So that's all very interesting. Um, how can we go and use this now? Well, we our input is being put straight into this function here. So what if we could, for example, type an extra, extra quote there, then that would mess up with how this function works. And now this is all of a sudden being executed, as you can tell from that it changes, changed color from not being a string anymore. But we notice that uh, quotes are being encoded, so that won't work. But backslashes are allowed. So what happens if I just say cookie and backslash? Well, let's find out. I'm going to take the script here again into 
my console. And if I press enter, now we get an error, invalid escape sequence. sequence. But we still see that this all worked. We escaped this quote. Now the string is all of this. And this is now, well, JavaScript, it, it's gonna be executed. But there is an error, and the reason why it's not being executed is because at the end here, uh, our slash appears once more, and this is messing with some things. So yeah, we have to fix that in some way. Uh, how can we fix that with the characters that we are allowed to use? Uh, I'm gonna, just gonna grab this here, and we see that the, this is a new line here. And we know that forward slashes were allowed. So I can put, a forward slash here, which would, well, comment out all of this junk that I don't need. Uh, now, obviously, we need to pay attention that what we input in the URL will also occur in the first occurrence, but luckily, since this is in a string, our two forward slashes won't mess anything up. So if I run this, we see that, well, we get a step further. We now have a different error. So let's uh, continue building upon this different error, which is a missing colon in a conditional st expression. Um, okay, what does all of that mean? Well, uh, maybe you've seen some code being written like this. So uh, there's a conditional and then a question mark, uh, yes, and then a colon, no. And in this case, that is yes, because uh, one equals one. But if I say two, then this will say no. And this is a ternary operator or a conditional expression. And uh, it seems that that is being detected in our in our code here, and that's because we have this question mark here. So it's saying that this is all a conditional, then we have a question mark, and then, uh, well, this is what happens if that's true, but it, it's missing that colon to know what to do in the else statement. So what if we just add in that colon, so add in a colon, and if else, then we just do one. Well, now we have a totally different error. So we're continuing uh, going in the right direction. Right now it's saying that it misses a closing parenthesis and that is because we did that. Um, we commented out all of these random characters which contained the closing parenthesis for this function cookie spawn. So uh, let's work with that. As you can see, if I hover over this, it becomes red because it can't find the closing parenthesis. So let's just add that in here. Uh, and if we do that, now we get a totally different error saying that challenge is not defined. So we have to make sure that, well, challenge is defined. Uh, why does it say this, first of all? Well, here we have challenge, which is being interpreted as code. It's being interpreted as, hey, look for an object challenge. Uh, but obviously that object doesn't exist. Now, why is that happening? Well, here we are creating this function. And when you create the function, nothing happens with it. It's not being executed. So you can have uh, uncaught errors inside of your function that is being created. But when you run it, which is on here, that's when obviously these, these runtime errors come up. So we obviously want to insert our payload in here at some point. So we could do here a, a, a semicolon and then an alert of documents.domain. But that's not going to execute because this part errors out. So we either need to fix this part or we need to make sure that this runs before this runs. Now, this function is being opened here and closed all the way here. What if we just close it before uh, we run our payload? So if I do that, if I go and do that up here, right before we do our alert, I close this and now I run it we get a different error in saying that it expected uh, an expression, but got this, and that is happening at the end here, uh, because if I hover over this closing um, curly brace, then we see that, yes, this is red. Uh, so now we have to fix that, but as you can see, we're getting closer and closer to the end of this statement, so, so all errors are getting closer and closer to being fixed. So let's fix this now by, for example, creating something here, so we can create an, an, an object A, that is just gonna be empty. And now that should be correct. And yes, we get our pop-up on our main page. That is cool, we get a pop-up. However, the challenge is obviously not done because now we've just done this in our own console. We need to make sure this works in the URL. So let's try that out. So first of all, we have our cookie. Uh, and then we're gonna have to do a bunch of things. Well, first of all, we're gonna have to make sure that the ternary expression works out with a colon one. Then we're gonna have to close the parenthesis. 
we're gonna have to uh, I'm gonna put a semicolon just to be sure and I'm gonna close the curly brace then after that I'm gonna do an alert of documents.domain I'll put a semicolon once again now we have to create that a object that is gonna be empty to fix that closing uh, curly brace being alone at the end and now we have to comment out the rest on this line. If all is well, this will work. So uh, fingers crossed and let's do this. And if we do that, we see that this indeed works. So we have solved this XSS challenge uh, by just assessing all the options and then going to through some crazy fixing and breaking and fixing JavaScript in order to execute whatever we want which is now possible. Today we solved the June Integrity XSS challenge and this was a really fun one. We went through different rabbit holes where we didn't know which one was vulnerable, but in the end we found the vulnerable one and then we exploited that. And that is what XSS can be all about. Now, if you cannot get enough of these XSS challenges, then be sure to go and visit the link in the description to a blog post because we have been doing these for over two years almost. So there's plenty that are still up and running that you can play around with today. And if you never want to miss any of these in the future, then be sure to follow us on Twitter. On top of that, we also have a huge thing going on on Discord where we have our community and we chat with people and you can chat with anyone, ask questions, talk about challenges, all that great stuff. So be sure to also get on our Discord. Now, if you like this video, then, well, like it subscribe if you want to see more of us comment what you thought about this challenge down below and if you still have time after all of that then go to integrity.com sign up and start hacking legally whilst getting paid today but that has been it for me i'm pink draconian and i hope you enjoyed this write-up of the june integrity xss challenge <laughs> <laughs>